I didn't get a chance to say that. I know the weather isn't good. I came in yesterday, so I beat the storm. So for those of you who drove, good for you. Congratulations. <laughs> My uh, basic information is in the program, and you can all read. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. <laughs> Briefly, I'm a teacher with over 35 years' experience. I've taught everything from preschool through college, and I worked for the United States Department of Education. And my job was to review and evaluate education reform initiatives. So this isn't new territory for me. What I want to talk about is what's really at stake here, because there are different levels of conversation, and we need to understand all of them. One level is, are the Common Core standards themselves good or bad? They're bad, but we can talk about that. At a deeper level, what the federal government did, first in No Child Left Behind, and then continued with the ESEA waiver process, was say that they were going to mandate achievement. This isn't universal access to education. This is the government saying, every child will learn this information on this schedule to this degree. Is that possible? Well, let's see what happens. This is the audience participation portion of the program. Stand up. Wait, wait, until she's wired up there, exercise is good for you. Okay. You can tell she's a teacher. Uh -huh. This is vocal performance. When you can meet the standard, you can sit down, but you can't sit down until you meet the standard. Are we ready? All right. Luciano Pavarotti, considered one of the greatest tenors of the 20th century. Anyone who can sing like Pavarotti can sit down. Soloist with the New York Met. Chorus member with the New York Met. Soloist with the Regional Symphony. Chorus member with the Regional Symphony. You can't see each other, but nobody has sat down yet. <laughs> Soloist with the church choir. Sings in the church choir. Oh, a couple seating. Sings in the shower and enjoys it. Can't carry a tune in a bucket. Can't find the bucket. Okay. We even have one who didn't even sit down at that. <laughs> so now we're mandating achievement. Because you remember, that's what this is saying. Every child must achieve and must prove that they have achieved proficiency at this level. And states have to prove that they're meeting bars for proficiency and children have to meet this level in order to be promoted or graduate. Where am I going to set the bar for vocal performance? Well, where did you all sit down? That sings in the shower and enjoys it. I'm a teacher in a classroom. There is no reward whatsoever for me to have any child move one step beyond sings in the shower and enjoys it. But there are huge penalties for me and my school if every child doesn't get to sings in the shower and enjoys it. So where is the classroom teacher going to spend all her time? with Mr. and Mrs. Can't Carry a Tune in a Bucket out there, getting them up to, sings in the shower and enjoys it. What about the child for whom the standard should have been, Pavarotti? That child walked into the classroom already able to sing in the shower and enjoy it, so they will pass the test. Did education succeed for that child, or did it fail? It failed, but it's a silent failure. What happens to Mr. Can't Find the Bucket over there? Well, he gets ignored too, because the teachers cut their losses. They have to. They try to get as close as they possibly can to that 100%. So in fact, studies on this standards-based approach to education, one published by the National Research Council in Washington, D.C., actually say that when you use standards-based education, the goal does not become enlightening a child. The goal becomes reaching the standard. And teachers spend all their time focusing on the children immediately above the standard and immediately below the standard. The kids at the top are forgotten. The kids at the bottom are ignored. Achievement gaps do not shrink. They grow. And the research also says that all of the instruction shrinks to the test. 30 seconds. So the, the underlying concept is, can we mandate achievement by government fiat? And should we, is that really where we want education to go? So as we're discussing the content of the standards, you need to look a little deeper and say, why are we applying a manufacturing model, total quality control, to the children of America? Thank you.